tonight, an in-depth look at the rapidly changing COVID-19 situation on island which has already seen two COVID-related deaths. Colleagues and peers of well-known attorney Oswald Latcher mourn his passing. And a SASPA employee in the South tests positive for COVID-19. The details of these stories and more are coming up. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelies and Amy Zerbe. Good night. It is Wednesday, the 11th of November, 2020. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. I'm Lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. The island's COVID-19 status has rapidly changed over the course of mere weeks, with the number of cases rising by over 60 in the past two weeks. However, with the island recording its first two COVID-19-related deaths on Tuesday, the 10th of November, the Ministry of Health assembled to host a candid sit-down with the local media on Wednesday morning to give an update on St. Lucia's COVID-19 situation. Rochelle Gonzalez was present and produced this special feature. Since October 30th, the island has recorded nearly 70 cases of COVID-19, and on Tuesday, November 10th, just hours apart, the news that no one wanted to hear was broken. The island recorded its first and second COVID-related deaths. During a sitting at the House of Assembly, Prime Minister Alan Shastney announced that a 47-year-old male from Mikud, who presented at the St. Jude Hospital due to complications of underlying medical conditions, had succumbed to the illness. Later that night, another announcement was made that a 78-year-old male from the Groselay District who presented at the Victoria Respiratory Hospital was tested for COVID-19 and succumbed to the illness as well. With this concrete evidence that the disease has reached a new level of concern for the powers that be and the nation as a whole, the main heads of departments within the Ministry of Health met with the local media for an in-depth press conference where they gave a full breakdown of COVID-19 in St. Lucia as well as answer burning questions being asked by inquiring minds of the masses. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George opened the floor with both the global and the local statistics in relation to the number of cases, recoveries, deaths, and people being monitored. The latest WHO report, um, dated the 8th of November, we note an increase in the global numbers of cases of COVID 19 by 8% compared to the previous week, totaling more than 3.6 million new cases while the new deaths have increased by 21% to over 54,000 in the last week. On a local, that is on a national level, we've noted a total of 148 um, cases in country. We've had a total of um, 79 new cases in the last 14 days. We've recorded um, our first two deaths yesterday and on behalf of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I would like to extend the sincerest of condolences to the family and friends of um, those patients. And we have one person in critical condition within the ICU of the respiratory um, hospital. We have 100 active cases um, in country. We've had 19 recoveries from the 10th of October to the present. Um, and that was from case 29 moving forward. Um, our classification has now been updated to clusters of cases in country. And we are presently monitoring over 700 persons um, as part of our contact tracing process. The CMO revealed that in terms of the national plan, the island was open in a phased approach and is currently still in cycle one of phase five, which allows international travel with strict health protocols, the reopening of the hotel and tourism sector, and the new norms of protocol were set up along with the reopening of schools. She then explained that the MOH is looking into managing the clusters of new cases. Speaking of, the medical surveillance officer, Dr. Dana Gomez, gave the latest figures. The average age of persons is 39, but we've had from 3 to 80, 86 years. The age group that's most affected is the 25 to 49 age group. 27% um, of the cases are above 50, 50 years. So this graph basically shows the distribution of the cases based on the, the sex and the age group. So we notice 25 to 49 that's been affected. 
and we notice that more females are being affected than males in that age group. I suppose because of the health-seeking behavior of females, we tend to um, go to the healthcare facilities more frequently. And the second age group is the 50 plus age group. In terms of the regional an analysis, because we have eight health regions in St. Lucia, we are not going by cases, we go in by incidents, which tells us um, the number of new cases in a particular region, but it's based on the population, which, is, which gives you a more accurate measure. So for the incidence, we can see that library has the greatest incidence of cases because it has more cases, more positive cases on a smaller population. Following Dr. Gomez's presentation, the director of the Ezra Long Lab, Dr. Wayne Felicia, gave a progress report on testing projections throughout St. Lucia between March and present day. Here I can put up a graph which tells us what transpired over the last week, which is initially fresh in our minds. We can see here that we were able to do approximately 1,400 and something tests during that period of time and diagnose. I'm speaking from the 1st of November through to the 7th, Saturday the 7th. We were able to diagnose approximately, and this is in comparison with October, what transpired but we were able to diagnose approximately 45 persons within just one week period. And the graph I'm putting up puts into comparison what transpired through March. In the month of November, we were able, in, or the first week of November, we were able to test as many people as we did through the entire months of March, April, and May. And during the months of September through to November, we've been able to do the March through August numbers, testing approximately 10,000 people. The director of St. Jude Hospital, Dr. Sybil Natrum James, was also present and gave an overview of the way forward. She specifically addressed the impact that the first COVID-related death was having on the staff, as well as what measures are being put in place to protect them. We try our best to put all the necessary measures in place so that when a situation like that happens, that you know we can manage the, the situation. So we started yesterday, um, definitely right away we started with our contact tracing within the institution. We were able to get you know all those persons who were directly involved in the care of the patient and we were able to get them. Um, our COVID-19 test swabs were done and they were referred to the National Lab this morning. So hopefully we will get some answers as soon as it is available. Dr. Nature and James concluded by reminding the nation to adhere to the protocols because as simple as they are, they are the key to curbing the growing problem of community spread on Ireland. Currently the number of cases recorded on Ireland is 148. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. Stay with us, still to come, an outpouring of condolences following the death of well-known attorney Oswald Latcher. A SLAS for employee in the South tests positive for COVID-19 and the CSA appalled by recent comments by Health Minister Mary Isaac on the Respiratory Hospital. That and more after the break.